to love only what happens, what was destined, no greater, harmony. Received without conceit, released without struggle. The best answer to anger is silence. The more we value things outside our control, the less control we have. It is not events that disturb people, it is their judgments concerning them. To live a good life, we have the potential for it. If we can learn to be indifferent to what makes no difference. The soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. Life is short, that's all there is to say. Get what you can from the present a thoughtfully, justly. Be content to seem what you really are. Reject your sense of injury and the injury itself disappears. How soon will time cover all things, and how many it has covered already? Each of us needs what nature gives us, when nature gives it. Remember, matter, how tiny your share of it time, how brief and fleeting your allotment of it, fate, how small a role you play in it. When someone is properly grounded in life, they shouldn't have to look outside themselves for approval. He who follows reason in all things is both tranquil and active at the same time, and also cheerful and collected. A rock is thrown in the air, it loses nothing by coming down, gain nothing by going up. If someone responds to insult like a rock, what has the abuser gained with his invective? Stick to what's in front of you idea. Action, utterance. Be tolerant with others and strict with yourself. Do not be perturbed, for all things are according to the nature of the universal and in a little time you will be nobody and nowhere. True good fortune is what you make for yourself, good fortune, good character. Good intentions, good actions. Objective judgment, now, at this very moment, unselfish action, now, at this very moment, willing acceptance, now, at this very moment, a of all external events, that's all you need. Your subject to sorrow, fear. Jealousy, anger and inconsistency, that's the real reason you should admit that you are not wise. For God's sake, stop honoring externals, quit turning yourself into the tool of mere matter, or of people who can supply you or deny you those material things. As the same fire assumes different shapes when it consumes objects differing in shape, so does the one self take the shape of every creature and whom he is present. A man when he has done a good act, does not call out for others to come and see, but he goes on to another act as a vine goes on to produce again the grapes in season. Is any man afraid of change? What can take place without change? What then is more pleasing or more suitable to the universal nature?
and can you take a hot bath unless the wood for the fire undergoes a change, and can you be nursed unless the food undergoes a change, and can anything else that is useful be accomplished without change? Do you not see then that for yourself also to change is just the same, and equally necessary for the universal nature? Receive without pride, let go without attachment. When you have assumed these names, a good, modest, truthful, rational, a man of equanimity, and magnanimous a take care that you do not change these names and if you should lose them quickly return to them i have often wondered how it is that every man loves himself more than all the rest of men but yet sets less value on his own opinions of himself than on the opinions of others Consider that before long you will be nobody and nowhere, nor will any of the things exist that you now see, nor any of those who are now living, for all things are formed by nature to change and be turned and to perish in order that other things in continuous succession may exist. Treat whatever happens as wholly natural not novel or hard to deal with but familiar and easily handled. Accept the things to which fate binds you, and love the people with whom fate brings you together, but do so with all your heart. Very little is needed to make a happy life it is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive a to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. Whatever happens to you has been waiting to happen since the beginning of time. That which is not good for the beehive cannot be good for the bees. Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be, be one. To live happily is an inward power of the soul. It is not death that a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. Dwell on the beauty of life, watch the stars, and see yourself running with them. Keep that tight a broken bar as a blazing fire takes whatever you throw on it, and makes it light and flame. When jarred, unavoidably, by circumstance, revert at once to yourself and don't lose the rhythm more than you can help, you'll have a better grasp of harmony if you keep going back to it. So you were born to feel nice, instead of doing things and experiencing them, don't you see the plants, the birds? The ants and spiders and bees going about their individual tasks, putting the world in order, as best they can, and you're not willing to do your job as a human being, why aren't you running to do what your nature demands? If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it and as you have the power to revoke at any moment. Take the shortest route, the one that nature planned a to speak and act in the healthiest way, do that, and be free of pain and stress, free of all calculation and pretension. 
It's time you realize that you have something in you more powerful and miraculous than the things that affect you and make you dance like a puppet. Keep reminding yourself of the way things are connected, of their relatedness. All things are implicated in one another and in sympathy with each other. This event is the consequence of some other one. Things push and pull on each other, and breathe together, and are one. As if you had died and your life had extended only to this present moment. Use the surplus that is left to you to live from this time onward according to nature. There are two vices much blacker and more serious than the rest, lack of persistence and lack of self-control a broken bar persist and resist. The universal order and the personal order are nothing but different expressions and manifestations of a common underlying principle. Nothing has such power to broaden the mind as the ability to investigate systematically and truly all that comes under thy observation in life. Forward, as occasion offers, never look round to see whether any shall no tide a broken bar be satisfied with success in even the smallest matter, and think that even such a result is no trifle. Because a thing seems difficult for you, do not think it impossible for anyone to accomplish. People with a strong physical constitution can tolerate extremes of hot and cold people of strong mental health can handle anger, grief, joy and the other emotions. It is in your power to live here, but if men do not permit you, then get a way out of life, as if you were suffering no harm. The house is smoky, and I quit it. Why do you think that this is any trouble, but so long as nothing of the kind drives me out, I remain, am free, and no man shall hinder me from doing what I choose and I choose to do what is according to the nature of the rational and social animal. If you didn't learn these things in order to demonstrate them in practice, what did you learn them for? When faced with anything painful or pleasurable, anything bringing glory or disrepute, realize that the crisis is now, that the Olympics have started. And waiting is no longer an option that the chance for progress, to keep or lose, turns on the events of a single day. No man can escape his destiny, the next inquiry being how he may best live the time that he has to live. In the morning, when you rise unwillingly, let this thought be present, I am rising to the work of a human being. Who exactly are these people that you want to be admired by? Aren't they the same people you are in the habit of calling crazy? And is this your life ambition, then a to win the approval of lunatics? Consider what men are when they are eating sleeping, coupling, evacuating, and so forth, then what kind of man they are when they are imperious and arrogant, or angry and scolding from their elevated place. If you learn that someone is speaking ill of you, 
Don't try to defend yourself against the rumors respond instead with, a yes, and he doesn't know the half of it, because he could have said more. He who has a vehement desire for posthumous fame does not consider that every one of those who remember him will himself also die very soon. Let us overlook many things in those who are like antagonists in the gymnasium, for it is in our power, as I said, to get out of the way and to have no suspicion or hatred. It is just charming how people boast about qualities beyond their control. For instance, a I am better than you because I have many estates, while you are practically starving or, a I'm a consul, a I'm a governor, or a I have fine curly hair. Begin A to begin is half the work, let half still remain again begin this, and thou wilt have finished. How strangely men act, they will not praise those who are living at the same time and living with themselves but to be themselves praised by posterity, by those whom they have never seen or ever will see, this they set much value on. Always observe how ephemeral and worthless human things are, and what was yesterday a speck of semen tomorrow will be a mummy or ashes. A cucumber is bitter, throw it away, there are briars in the road, turn aside from them, this is enough, do not add, and why were such things made in the world? To do harm is to do yourself harm, to do an injustice is to do yourself an injustice. If something does not make a person worse in himself, neither does it make his life worse, nor does it harm him without or within. Death and life, success and failure, pain and pleasure. Wealth and poverty, all these happen to good and bad alike, and they are neither noble nor shameful and hence neither good nor bad. The present is the only thing of which a man can be deprived, if it is true that this is the only thing which he has and that a man cannot lose something he does not already possess. Don't believe your situation is genuinely bad and no one can make you do that. Is there smoke in the house? If it's not suffocating, I will stay indoors if it proves too much, I'll leave. Always remember rather the door is open. Someone bathes in haste don't say he bathes badly, but in haste. Someone drinks a lot of wine don't say he drinks badly, but a lot, until you know the reasons. How do you know that their actions are vicious? Consider that everything is opinion, and opinion is in your power. Take away then. When you choose, your opinion, and like a mariner who has rounded the headland, you will find calm, everything stable, and a waveless bay. A vine cannot behave all lively, nor an olive tree vinely it is impossible, inconceivable. No more can a human being wholly efface his native disposition. Since the greatest part of what we say and do is unnecessary, 
Dispensing with such activities affords a man more leisure and less uneasiness. To have contemplated human life for 40 years is the same as to have contemplated it for 10,000 years, for what more will you see? An ignorant person is inclined to blame others for his own misfortune, to blame oneself is proof of progress, but the wise man never has to blame another or himself. The mind in itself has no needs, except for those it creates itself, is undisturbed, except for its own disturbances, knows no obstructions, except those from within. Whatever anyone does or says, I must be good, just as if the gold, or the emerald, or the purple were always saying this. Whatever anyone does or says, I must be emerald and keep my color. No one objects to what is useful to him, to be of use to others is natural, then don't object to what is useful to you while being of use. A boxer derives the greatest advantage from his sparring partner A and my accuser is my sparring partner, he trains me in patience, civility and even temper. Either you're going to be depressed when your wish is not realized or foolishly pleased with yourself if it is, overjoyed for the wrong reasons. Most of us dread the deadening of the body and will do anything to avoid it, about the deadening of the soul, however, we don't care one iota. Don't let outward appearances mislead you into thinking that someone with more prestige, power or some other distinction must on that account be happy. As you are careful when you walk not to step on a nail or turn your ankle, so you should take care not to do any injury to your character at the same time. If you lost the capacity to read, or play music, you would think it was a disaster, but you think nothing of losing the capacity to be honest, decent and civilized. Things do not touch the soul, for they are external and remain immovable so our perturbations come only from our inner opinions. We are too much accustomed to attribute to a single cause that which is the product of several, and the majority of our controversies come from that. As it is with the play. So it is with life a what matters is not how long the acting lasts, but how good it is, it is not important at what point you stop, stop wherever you will only make sure that you round it off with a good ending. If someone is incapable of distinguishing good things from bad and neutral things from either a well, how could such a person be capable of love? The power to love, then, belongs only to the wise man. Enough of this miserable, whining life, stop monkeying around, why are you troubled, what's new here, what's so confounding, the one responsible, take a good look or just the matter itself, then look at that, there's nothing else to look at, and as far as the gods go, by now you could try being more straightforward and kind, it's the same, whether you've examined these things for a hundred years, or only three. If, at some point in your life, you should come across anything better than justice, honesty, self-control, 
encourage then a mind satisfied that is has succeeded in enabling you to act rationally, and satisfied to accept what's beyond its control a if you find anything better than that. Embrace it without reservations it must be an extraordinary thing indeed eh? and enjoy it to the full. Treat what you don't have as non-existent, look at what you have, the things you value most, and think of how much you'd crave them if you didn't have them, but be careful. Don't feel such satisfaction that you start to overvalue them may that it would upset you to lose them. Just ask whether they put their self-interest in externals or in moral choice. If it's in externals, you cannot call them friends, any more than you can call them trustworthy, consistent, courageous or free. Do not act as if you are going to live 10,000 years. Death hangs over you, while you live, while it is in your power, be good. Be cheerful also, and do not seek external help or the tranquility that others give. A man then must stand erect, not be kept erect by others. The art of life is more like the wrestler's art than the dancer's, in respect of this, that it should stand ready and firm to meet onsets that are sudden and unexpected. The history of your life is now complete and your service is ended, and how many beautiful things you have seen and how many pleasures and pains you have despised and how many things called honorable you have spurned and to how many ill-minded folks you have shown a kind disposition. Anything in any way beautiful derives its beauty from itself and asks nothing beyond itself. Praise is no part of it, for nothing is made worse or better by praise. Every day as it comes should be welcomed and reduced forthwith into our own possession as if it were the finest day imaginable. What flies past has to be seized that. Do not indulge in dreams of having what you have not, but reckon up the chief of the blessings you do possess, and then thankfully remember how you would crave for them if they were not yours. People look for retreats for themselves, in the country, by the coast. Or in the hills a broken bar there is nowhere that a person can find a more peaceful and trouble-free retreat than in his own mind a broken bar so constantly give yourself this retreat, and renew yourself. When you wish to delight yourself, think of the virtues of those who live with you for instance, the activity of one the modesty of another, the liberality of a third, and some other good quality of a fourth. Don't waste the rest of your time here worrying about other people unless it affects the common good, it will keep you from doing anything useful, you'll be too preoccupied with what so and so is doing, and why and what they're saying, and what they're thinking, and what they're up to, and all the other things that throw you off and keep you from focusing on your own mind. To the gods I am indebted for having good grandfathers, good parents, a good sister, good teachers, good associates, good kinsmen and friends, nearly everything good, for all these, blessings in my life, require the help of the gods and fortune. All you need are these, 
certainty of judgment in the present moment to action for the common good in the present moment and an attitude of gratitude in the present moment for anything that comes your way. You can discard most of the junk that clutters your mind day things that exist only there and clear out space for yourself, by comprehending the scale of the world, by contemplating infinite time, by thinking of the speed with which things change at each part of everything the narrow space between our birth and death the infinite time before the equality unbounded time that follows. If you seek tranquility, do less or do what's essentially what the logos of a social being requires and in the requisite way, which brings a double satisfaction, to do less, better, because most of what we say and do is not essential, if you can eliminate it, you'll have more time, and more tranquility. Ask yourself at every moment, A is this necessary? Failure to observe what is in the mind of another has seldom made a man unhappy but those who do not observe the movements of their own minds must of necessity be unhappy. Set yourself in motion, if it is in your power, and do not look about you to see if anyone will observe it nor yet expect Plato's Republic. But be content if the smallest thing goes on well, and consider such an event to be no small matter. Brief is man's life and small the nook of the earth where he lives brief, too, is the longest posthumous fame, buoyed only by a succession of poor human beings who will very soon die and who know little of themselves much less of someone who died long ago. Keep in mind how fast things pass by and are gone are those that are now and those to come. Existence flows past us like a river. The A what is in constant flux. The A why has a thousand variations. Nothing is stable. Not even what's right here. The infinity of past and future gapes before us a, a chasm whose depths we cannot see. Think of all the years passed by in which you said to yourself, I'll do it tomorrow, and how the gods have again and again granted you periods of grace of which you have not availed yourself. It is time to realize that you are a member of the universe, that you are born of nature itself, and to know that a limit has been set to your time. Use every moment wisely, to perceive your inner refulgence, or it will be gone and never more within your reach. It's unfortunate that this has happened. Number. It's fortunate that this has happened and I've remained unharmed by it and not shattered by the present or frightened of the future. It could have happened to anyone, but not everyone could have remained unharmed by it. My advice is really this. What we hear the philosophers saying and what we find in their writings should be applied in our pursuit of the happy life. We should hunt out the helpful pieces of teaching, and the spirited and noble-minded sayings which are capable of immediate practical application a not far-fetched or archaic expressions or extravagant metaphors and figures of speech a and learn them so well that words become works. Reflect on the other social roles you play. If you are a council member, consider what a council member should do. If you are young, 
What does being young mean? If you are old, what does age imply? If you are a father, what does fatherhood entail? Each of our titles, when reflected upon, suggests the acts appropriate to it.